Hi, I'm Dr. Mall. I'm Dr. Crisp. And today for Research Friday, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at an article in a peer-reviewed journal, and we're just going to kind of dissect it a little bit from a clinical perspective and also from an interpretation perspective. And if you'd like to check out the article, just check the link below. Research right. Friday, new article. I love this article. The reason I love this article is for a couple of reasons. First of all, <clears throat> if you've ever dealt with lateral epicondylitis, uh, it's not everybody's favorite. Oh, it's everybody's favorite. Let's yeah. just be honest. No, <laughs> if you deal a lot with elbows, you dislike lateral epicondylitis a lot. And the reason I like this article so much is from the Archives of the Bone and Joint Surgeries 2015, and it talks about a condition that a lot of people don't think much about, uh, radial tunnel syndrome. Yeah. Um, it's a close mimicker to lateral epicondylitis, um, yet... It's completely different, and how you manage it is completely different. So what it talks about is, um, if we, let's just go into how you, when you're talking to the patient, the history, okay? One of the things is that if it bothers them at night or wakes them up at night, you need to start thinking radial tunnel syndrome, okay? Also, where they point, most of the time, lateral epicondylitis is yeah, right at the lateral condyl. right on that bone. If they point right there, yeah. It's more likely lateral epicondylitis. Makes sense. Right? And then the orthopedic test. Gotta love Mosley's. Mosley's, three fingers, yep. like you're a magician. It hurts. Oh, it hurts. Yep. And you'll come up, you can do cosins. Okay. Reproduce oh, it. Oh, it reproduces it. Oh, it's good. It's lateral epicondylitis. Yet, if they point about two inches below the lateral epicondylitis, right around the radial head, you need to completely change the way you're thinking. So really, as an examiner, if I wasn't 100% present when the patient points to where the mm -hmm. problem is, I could falsely identify that as lateral epicondylitis. Yes, you could. Or, so point to it. Or where's it hurt? And they go, oh, it's here. Yeah. No, 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 no. Be more specific. Where? Gotcha. Oh, it's here. Yeah. Oh, then you can do your Mosley's or your Cosin's. And if it lights them up, or it hurts, absolutely. Yeah. Um, one of the what another part that I like since I'm an anatomy geek, he went really in depth with all the anatomy. So if you really love that, this is a great article. Goes into all the arcade of Frosch, where all the yeah, where all the tissue comes across. Yeah. Uh, um, how you can get it impinged, how it can be affected. He also goes into different surgical techniques. Um, but one of the things is that um, I think that we talk about is that in lateral epicondylitis, uh, injections may not do the best. True. And this, yeah. it's opposite. This, it kind of showed it actually has a positive spin on it. A very positive spin on it. I think if I remember the numbers right, it's anywhere from like 67 to like 90% improvement. Yeah over about a three three or four month period, which is which is huge, especially if you start talking about, you know, if you've ever dealt with lateral elbow pain, it, it can be debilitating. You reach, you grab anything, yeah. you know, um, it just, it's not a wonderful thing to have. Absolutely. I would agree, and you know, this is one of those conditions, and I like in the article that he does use cadaver images mm -hmm. to help mm -hmm. under, help the reader really understand mm -hmm. what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And it sounds some sounds pretty silly given the fact that we've all taken an extensive amount of anatomy mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in order to be where we're at. But I remember we were teaching up in Dallas a continuing education course and you were going over your cadaver review, just a simple anatomy review mm -hmm. of the lateral elbow mm -hmm. and upper arm. And I remember when you got into that cadaver and you were demonstrating where the lateral epicondyle is and the radial nerve yep. and the supinator muscle. I mean, a light bulb went off for me like, oh man, I wonder how many cases I treated as lateral epicondylitis when in reality it was radial tunnel syndrome. Um, if we're very honest with ourselves, we've both treated a lot of them. And, and when I look back at those cases, now I understand why they didn't resolve 100%. Yes, and then one of the and one of the things is that a simple one that you can also do is that if you want to take the radial nerve as it comes around and goes over the anterior portion of the uh, lateral epicondyle and then it dives down through the supinator, you know, you just turn the supinate and flex. Yeah. And if that hurts, yeah, that's a that's a positive test. Most of the time, if you bend the elbow, take the tension off, 
hello, you just did your fancy it's orthopedic way. test based on anatomy. Yeah, so it changes a few things in the way we think, the, the mm -hmm. differential we build, mm -hmm. but I think even on the rehab side, it changes quite a bit. Listening to the way it's described, the review of the article, you know, lateral epicondylitis, we can always go through traditional strengthening exercises. Yes. We mm -hmm. can work forearms until mm -hmm. symptoms decrease, and then mm -hmm. we can work the extensors. Mm -hmm. Um, we can work sta stability exercises or mobility exercises mm -hmm. in the wrist. Mm -hmm. That's all been shown to help lateral epicondyle problems. But when we come to radial tunnel syndrome, those don't seem to work. I, I no. feel like some of that strengthening actually makes the symptoms worse. Well, and that's one of the things that if you, that's why you need to pay attention to what you're doing. And that's why you need to ask the patient every time, how are you doing? What well, seems to be getting worse or you're not getting where you want to be. You change up your rehab. It starts to get worse. You need to pay attention. It's called, yeah. to me, it's just being the doctor. Yeah, and it's being attentive to truly when you need to stabilize something, strengthen something, or you know, like in radial tunnel, mm -hmm. it may require a little bit more stretching and yep. shoulder strengthening, mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe a little bit less self myofascial release. Yes, exactly. Especially if you are a fan of the lacrosse ball, which yeah, a lot of people are. Cross balls, tennis balls, there's so many different things people utilize, mm -hmm. but that can actually cause some of that symptomatology to come back. Absolutely, you can, especially if it's a true impingement and you just impinge it, impinge it, impinge yeah. it, and you actually make it worse. You know, I like the article. It goes into, like you talked about, some of the other surgical approaches. Mm -hmm. um, it talks about mm -hmm. some of the conservative approaches, whether it be the injection, Inside. home remedies, or conservative care. We would, we mm -hmm. would lump chiropractic care or physical therapy into that yep. conservative mm -hmm. realm. Um, and, and it gives a good measure as to what radial tunnel truly is, how it presents, mm -hmm. some of the things that we can mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's also important to point out because this is another one of those conditions that typically targets one population more than the other. Yes, it's, it's in fact, he even starts, talks about it in the, the article. Women aged 30 to 50 years old. Yeah, and, and so when we start paying attention not only to the history in our exam, we also have to pay attention to what type of patient we have in front of us because sure that can be indicative of the right diagnosis. Yes, it can. Yes, it yeah. can. So it just so, goes back to just uh, a good history. And I know my light bulb went off when I saw that cadaver uh, mm -hmm. anatomy review mm -hmm. at the CE and then seeing this article, I got excited about the fact that, hey, I had a change of approach as a provider. Very much. Hopefully after mm -hmm. um, somebody reads this and, and really sits through and sifts through the cases mm -hmm. they have, Maybe mm -hmm. that light bulb will go off and it will make them a little bit more excited to see a lateral, epi uh, lateral elbow problem than just saying, oh man, not another, not another epicondylitis. Uh, let's just go. So I <laughs> like the article, go. great summary, Love the article. radial tunnel syndrome, something worthwhile being educated about, mm -hmm. being cognizant about mm -hmm. examination, history, and what we really can do for it. Absolutely. I love it. Very well. Good article. Good article. Thanks for joining us for another Research Friday. I'm Dr. Mall. I'm Dr. Crisp. And if you just want to check out the article we just referenced, look at the link below. And we'll see you next Friday. See you next Friday.